And Pitt, well, the chances they had, they put them in the back of the net. Yeah, finishing is so important in this game. You can create all the chances you want, but if you can't finish them off and get past the goalkeeper, it's not going to do you any good. And finishing for this Wake Forest team has been a bit spotty so far this year. We will not see Baba Niang. Well, he's not in the starting lineup. We'll see if he comes on later. So we'll see how this Wake Forest team does without the services of Baba Niang. He is electric, but there's plenty of talent on this soccer team to fill his void. There sure is, but that, you know, does not minimize the fact that with him not on the field, at least right now, it is a loss for this Wake Forest team. I mean, he's such a an intimidating presence on the ball. He can turn on the Jets and end up at top speed in like three steps. And he still maintains control on the ball, even while running at full speed. He is a sight to see. Wake Forest taking on Gardner-Webb for the first time. 20 years has come and gone. Last time they played, Scott Seeley was on that team. Scott Seeley was the last Demon Deacon to record back-to-back -back hat tricks year after year. And that's uh, what Roald Mitchell did last time he was on this pitch. We talked about that in the open. There's a Roald Mitchell turn and blast, but offside call. Roald Mitchell did a good job on that turn. Just got a little too far in front. The series history, you look, Wake Forest has dominated this series, but we talked about this in the open. This is not the typical Gardner-Webb team that Wake Forest is used to. And you know what else? It was said throughout training yesterday. Wake Forest knows it. He said, this is not the Gardner-Webb we've been used to seeing. This team is really good. Yeah, just ask South Carolina, right? Or ask James Madison. They were eighth in the country. That ball gets through. No flag up. Uh, Kyle, you're astonished by it. I think he eventually called it. Everybody's a little bit out of sorts because of the delay. One hour and 30 minute delay. Almost one hour, one hour and 30 minute delay because of storms, lightning in the area. A weird storm. I just, not a lot of, I mean, we're, the lightning was right above us for a good 45 minutes. Very little rain. Yeah, just somewhat hovered around us. Luckily, we were able to get this thing going. Unfortunately, a little bit later into the night, but the lights are on here at Spry. And Spry under the lights can be fascinating. What is in store for this fixture. Gardner-Webb, a very physical team. We'll get to that in a minute. We're not shy of coming into contact with their opponent. <laughs> Old Mitchell gets a little shove in the back. Yeah, that's, those are always really tough for officials because You've got a player flying in like that for an aerial duel, but he has every right to the ball. So if he makes a play on the ball, then it's legal. But it's so easy for a player to hide a little bit of a push. Here. Right, right. So it's Get tough. That advantage, yeah. yeah, it's tough for the officials to see that. Press already on Mpanza. Prince looks to be 100% now. Travis Smith Jr. came in for him. He came in for Prince and Ponza while Prince was getting healthy and did a fantastic job back there. A little bit of look into the future for this Demon Deacon squad. Here comes the press by the Demon Deacons. They pressed against Pitt from the 20th minute all the way to the 90th minute. They were relentless with the press. Unfortunately, they went down 3-0. It was 1-0 at half, and Wake Forest actually seemed to be the better team in the second half despite giving up two goals. Possession-wise, in shots. That's just how the cruel game of soccer goes. 
It's been a really spotty start for this game for both teams. Not a lot of accurate passing. The pitch is going to be a little bit more faster because of the rain that have, has fallen, or the little bit of rain that has fallen. You can see some of the tracks. So sometimes you have to adjust for that. On top of, you know, when your body's ready for a 7 o'clock start, then you have to wait, and that just does a lot to your psyche. So it'll take a little bit for your touch to get on. Yeah, no question about it. Not, certainly not a deluge, but definitely still some precipitation. Roll Mitchell has been, they've been targeting him <laughs> a couple of times. You mentioned how physical this Gardner-Webb team is, and they're, they're playing him through the back a lot. Referee has not bitten just yet. Good step by Garrison Tupps. Trey Southen way off his line. And the ball turned over. This could create something for Gardner-Webb as Garrison Tubbs was looking for some help by the official and didn't get it. That was a relentless play, too. It's also really good defending by Liam O'Gara there at the end. Really, really well done. Dangerous position. There's Coach Scott Wells, his first year. Came over, he was assistant at UNCG. He said he did not want to leave UNCG until he felt that his mission was done, that they had created something. I would say that they did that by their storied end to last season by going to the Elite Eight. So Scott Wells, after being an assistant for a while now, he is the head man in charge, and he's done an absolute sparkling job at Boiling Springs. Not surprised at all. There's a corner. And here's the first opportunity for Gardner Webb on a set piece. You mentioned it earlier, Ty. This has been the weak point for Wake Forest so far this year, defending set piece plays. We'll see how they perform here. There's been a little bit of ball watching. There's been uh, a tendency to get caught in picks, things like that. Gardner Webb is. Pretty good at set pieces, too. So this right here will be the first test for Wake Forest. An outswinging corner. And here it comes, low driven. As Forbes able to send it up to Cooper Flax, and Cooper Flax sent it up. I don't understand that. That was I don't think he was expecting somebody to. Yeah. Run. Definitely, because it looked like it looked like he looked up and saw something, and then delivered the ball, and there was just nobody there. That was a chance to break too, and, and just gone. And send it to the half space, but really nobody moving up the field, just trying to get it out of danger's way. And Gardner Webb building again. Scott Wells said he his philosophy is building different ways. Try to. Use all the channels. He uses the numerical advantage, which we've seen a lot of managers in the EPL and elsewhere do. They're creating something on the right channel. This is Brown right outside of the 18. The double team somehow was able to split and send it inside. And Gardner-Webb already knocking on the door here in the final third. Yeah, they've been the better team so far here through the first eight minutes or so. That was a tough one. Just kind of rolled out over the end line. Looked like got his feet stuck trying to control the bouncing ball. Maybe the wet surface had a an impact there. But either way, this, this running Bulldogs team has been better in possession so far. They've been had more possession. The physical play has made an impact. Yeah, so you add that physical play with the rain. We're going to see some entertaining soccer, some chippiness for sure. Coach Muse talking to him. He actually puts Gardner Webb up as far as comparison, like a Syracuse light, just by their physical nature and by tight some praise. of their height. That's tight praise, too. Nice little teaser, too. Segway that Wake Forest will be taking on Syracuse this Saturday night. 
Syracuse also off to another great start. As Wake Forest trying to move into the final third, Bo Cummins. Surging. Thomas. Now the Dukes trying to get back into their style of play is Kojima inserts it to Flax. Flax sends it over to Thomas. Thomas trying to find a window. A clearance by the back line of Gardner Webb. Uh, keeps Wake Forest from at least testing. Miller, yeah, the Deeks just don't have, the, they haven't yet been able to assert their dominance in the final third. It seems like they're outnumbered every time they get forward. Kojima there, they tried to play him through, and he was blanketed by two or three white shirts. So just got to work the possession and try to get overloads or mismatches. Forbes, he will creep over here. You see him on the near side. One thing that Gardner Webb has to keep a lock on is number 14. Sometimes Forbes you won't hear his name, and then all of a sudden he will explode. A very risky play. Pulled back. That was Nardi. Their last contest was against JMU. JMU was eighth in the country, Kyle. That finished a 2-2 draw. And Gardner-Webb had to play with 10 men for about 30 minutes of that contest. Shows resiliency. Shows a, a commitment. Hughes and Yolu also are not going to be available tonight because of red cards. I mean, that was a very, very intense matchup. Gardner-Webb has played JMU well. And they even played them, of course, well a week ago. And that was packed down there, too, in Boiling Springs. The, the students have gotten behind this team. And you saw that graphic with how many cards that Gardner-Webb has been issued. That just shows you some of their physical play. And I, and I spoke to Coach Wells, and he said that's not really his style. He does like his his team to get, you know, not they're not shy of contact, which I agree. And so some of that you could tell. He, he, uh, yeah, some of that you could tell he's not exactly proud that of the yellow cards, but he wants his team to get get right into it. And his Flax is able to send that one. He got all into that one, and Gardner Webb was able to cut that one out. Escribano, good to see him back there playing that. Left back position. Wake Forest will reset. Nobody has a shot yet. Although Gardner Webb probably had the best opportunity we have seen thus far. Pods ahead up. Thought about sending it over the top. Mentioned how the Deeks had kind of invested by. Gardner Webb through the first eight minutes or so. Now, Wake Forest starting to establish some possessional dominance. They're trying to get Gardner Webb out of their shell, but look at this all 10 outfield players behind the ball right now for the running Bulldogs. And possession on their opponent's side. Mitchell turns. Mitchell goes down. Forbes cleans it up, and it's one day. That is why you always have to run with your teammates because you never know where that ball is going to come out. Absolutely. It looked like Roald Mitchell had a real big opportunity there. The tackle comes in. It was a good tackle, but there's Jelani Forbes right there to clean up the mess, and that is how you play team football. You watch this really good entry feed by Kojima, and how about the dummy or the flick? Hard to tell which one it was. Good tackle comes in, but no one marks Forbes at the back post. Look at that flick by Cooper Flax. Beautiful. Good tackle, and then another good tackle. off. Yeah, I think so. Got the ball. I'd like to see a little closer view, but I tell you what, Rolf Mitchell just is so good on that with his long legs and end up getting clipped. He's 
guaranteed either to score or find a way to get a PK. Yeah, and, and that's such a, a huge moment here for Wake because, like we said, they had, they had been a bit of a slow start to this game, coming off the defeat to Pitt, or a really humbling defeat. You know, what, the 3-0 scoreline wasn't a reflection of the game, but they still lost 3-0. That's, that's tough to swallow. You come here against a good Gardner website and get an early goal. That is, uh, it, it's comforting right. for the rest of the game. Obviously, there's a ton of soccer left to be played, but well, that was one thing that Coach Muse was expressing to me when I spoke to him for a good long time yesterday. He said, it's how you respond. You know, he, he, could clearly, he clearly told me, he said, listen, at the end of that match, it, it's either there's a difference between gutted or angry. Gutted is where you feel like you've played the best you can and you come out with a result that you don't want. Angry is where you know and you knew as a team, you could have done better. And that's what he said his team was at the end of the pit game. Angry, upset. And so, I, I, I mean, I don't know what he said in the locker room, but I'm pretty sure it says, well, what are you going to do in that anger? Right. And that's a way to respond against a very good Gardner-Webb team. Gardner-Webb is not allowed. Uh, they only allowed, they allowed two goals to JMU. They kept South Carolina scoreless. O'Gara. Tubbs. He continues to move up. Escribano finds some space. I don't think they quite see him. It was good defense by Gardner Webb. Boy, Garrison Tubbs just knows when to step, doesn't he? Every time. Every step is perfect. He's one of the best in the nation. Good probing pass by Flax. If this pitch was not as wet, I think that would have sat right perfectly for Forbes to put a foot on it. A messy Odegaard-style pass into the defensive or the attacking third. Gardner-Webb looking to respond. And they can do that. Kachima. Left it alone for O'Gara. O'Gara will play Flax, and Flax thought about continuing towards the 18, but pulled it back. Reset O'Gara, good awareness. As you saw, Zacherson coming right on him. And O'Gara misplays a ball. This could result in an equalizer for Gardner Webb. Flicked on. Trace Alphen smacks it off the post. And we still sit 1 0. Absolutely beautiful save there by Alphen. He had to go the length of the goal to make that stop. Excellent header, but he was up to the task. Unlucky touch by O'Gara that almost got Gardner Webb with an equalizer. Oh, the soccer gods are very, very, very nasty when it comes to that. You lose the ball right there. Nothing against Liam O'Gara. He's a fantastic freshman. This is just freshman mistakes that will come with the season. Let's take a look at that replay, Kyle. It's a really good header, and he is wrong footed is Alfin. He was leaning the other way, expecting that to go far post. It comes near post, and he has to, against the, the leaning weight of his body on a wet surface, move to the opposite side. Yeah, I thought he smacked it off the post, but his head about smacked that post. Good play by Alfin there to shut that one down. Gardner-Webb has scored on flicks before. Gara, right back on the horse. Wake Forest leading 1-0. Not at all a comfortable lead, especially against this Gardner-Webb team. Undefeated here in 2023. Under the Scott Wells regime. A coach that has paid his dividends to become 
the head coach of a program, and Gardner Webb made a brilliant hire. Escribano in his press coming in. Escribano calm and collective. Flax, the switch, Escribano. Oh, a smart idea. He knew that was going to be a tough play. Even a good play, even a better play by Brown. Odell Brown moving his way, sends this one on the ground and almost escapes underneath Alfin. He didn't get a touch on that somehow. I don't, so I don't it, know how. In the process, he was still able to not touch that ball, let it roll underneath him. I couldn't quite tell if he did that on purpose or not, but <laughs> yeah, it looks like he does that on purpose awkwardly, but well done. At the very last second, decided it was going to go wide. Yeah. That is good thinking, quick thinking, too, by Trace Alfin. Flax. There's Kojima. A little pocket of space. Still sitting there in the vertical lanes for Wake Forest. They have really used the center of the pitch. They have. Absolutely right. They have really gone away from the wings early on. Although they scored <laughs> right, well, right, yeah, from a deflection. Right. right. Yeah. But I, I get what you're saying. It's almost if they want to keep on those the center channels, right, and the, the vertical lanes, and then possibly spray it out. But they are they are very compact. Here's Ogara. Ogara escapes, slides it over to Thomas. Thomas inside the 18. Kojima thought about it, little stutter step. Here's Thomas again, backed up. He'll play it back to his support. Cummins. Somebody's got to shoot. There were a couple opportunities there to just have a rip, get a deflection. I thought for sure Kojima was going to at least attempt the shot. Rob Mitchell trying to pull this one down with his chest. Kojima. And now they call a handball. Not sure what the call is there. He did have to rise on that one to try to settle it. <sighs> that's handball there. Handball. The rule is now that you get a little bit of leeway at the top of your shoulder. It's supposed to be basically where a t-shirt's length to use your shoulder just to, to take away those ticky-tack handball calls. I, sorry. I got called many times for a handball that wasn't a handball by the shoulder. I said, that's not your hand. So anyway, it's called hand here. And Earl Mitchell won't get a chance on goal. And we're still playing. Gardner Webb. Still on the attack. They have not been shaken at all by this 1-0 start by Wake Forest. And that says a lot about that team. Sure does. Yeah, absolutely. They are standing tall here and giving the Deeks as much as they can handle. Look out. Look a bad turnover. And Wake Forest has to figure out and find a remedy. As Escribano goes down, looks like we'll have two substitutions coming in for Gardner Webb. And we got an injured player for the visitors. Look at the international players. And I'm glad, I'm glad this is brought up because talking to Coach Wells, he was telling me he's a big fan of recruiting domestically. But at this point, I'm trying to turn around a program, rebuild, right? Not a lot of kids domestically are knocking on the door to come to Gardner Webb. So what he's doing, and UNCG did this, is make noise with international players where you get your name out there. Then domestic players will start being attracted to this program. So it's a right formula. It, it, it makes a lot of sense. So that's why he's got a lot of international players on this team. Absolutely, and they're not—they're by far not the only program to right, right. to use that. I mean, you you talk about them being Syracuse light. Uh, Syracuse 
did that. Uh, uh, Ian McIntyre used a number of international recruits to really build the profile of the program. It's amazing what he's done over there. I mean, it felt like just yesterday he was kind of down the dumps on how his team had performed. Remember, he was telling us, he said, stop sugarcoating it. We were terrible. <laughs> and then he was able to flip it and get the first national championship at Syracuse last season and off to a great start again. They'll be here Saturday night. Escribato into a pocket. That's a very difficult pass to make, trying to find Flax. Gardner-Webb did a good job of reading that and then immediately collapsing on that target. Even Cummins has pinched in. And really using that vertical cha uh, channel. And Ponza, and Ponza, Forbes, Flax, the wizardry, Flax puts on a shot, it's deflected, flag is up, an offside call. Let's see who he's calling the offside on. Let's see. If so Forbes, yes, on the, yeah, he's in an offside position. That's why you have to get back. A good job by Gardner Webb of keeping that shape and moving up to then place Forbes in an offside position. Talking to Scott Wells last night, he said he got the job right around Christmas time last season, not too long from the Elite Eight matchup against Indiana when he was with UNCG. He gets the job at Gardner-Webb, and then from mid-February to early May, he was on the road, rebuilding bringing in new players on the phone to try to make a roster for 2023. He jokingly said, I told my wife I would be able to be at home sometimes, but I was totally wrong. I was on the road <laughs> trying to put together. And then, and then so then you go from mid-February to early May, and then he's also coaching USL2 for Asheville. So that immediately overlaps into that season. So then you're gone from then until July, and now you're starting college soccer. Incredible. Escribano 1v1 with Brown. Brown gets away from him. Escribano, nice recovery. And a good service ball with a little much pace on it as Fisher tracks it down. 18 and a half remaining. In this first half, almost a clever move by Brown there to get it through the legs of Escribano. Flax, Wake Forest, they want to get up. Rode Mitchell, he'll get up. Mitchell turns on his juice, he goes down, and the point to the spot is there. Yeah, clear penalty there. Just an awkward tackle. Clumsy, may have been in, altered a bit by the wet surface, but rolled Mitchell. Well, I mean, what? It's just outside the boot. Yeah, <laughs> what a dribble. And he's got two defenders here, and it's just very clumsy. Maybe a little touch on the ball, but there's way too much man. So Fisher, more man than ball is given a yellow card and Roald Mitchell will once again sit 12 yards from another goal onto his accounts for 2023. 
Mitchell loves the spry stadium lights gleaming down upon him. Four goals here in 2023. Could it be five? Mitchell will do the honors. And it's blocked. What a block. A fantastic block by Miller. Superman style able to keep both hands on it. And are they going to redo this? The official is, looked like he was calling for the ball to come right back. Nah, it's a corner, I think. Or, what is going on? <laughs> so it will be a corner. The, the, the referee was like, pointing over, almost too close to that spot. But what he was doing, he was talking to some of the Gardner Webb players. What a clutch. Saved by Miller. Though. Huge save. Wow. It, it was a really good penalty. That's the thing is that was not a bad penalty. The goalkeeper just guessed correctly and made a really acrobatic stop. Six foot four. Miller comes up huge. In most cases, it'd be 2 nil in favor of the home side. A lot of times you see saves like that when the goalkeeper guesses correctly. And it's often a product of a, a poor hit, right? Like a bad penalty. It's too central, too low. That was neither of those things. It wasn't roofed, but he hit it far enough towards the, the post that it was a difficult stop, and it had some height on it. So that's a, a really, really good save. Well, he was going lower right corner, right? Where we saw his location yeah. against uh, Furman. Yes. Yeah. So obviously they they have done some scouting. Looking at some film. Oof. So you talk about internationals. Miller from Australia, six foot four. He came over Juco ranks from Iowa Western, which you see a lot of players making their pathway to D1 through Juco. Iowa Western, very good program there. In fact, he was. 2020 NJCAA first team All-American. So a, a very good goalkeeper that Scott Wells was able to find via JUCO as well as international player. He earned the role of starting goalkeeper, goalkeeper for both the under 21 and under 18, Brisbane City, the National Premier League premieres in Queensland, that's in Australia. And now he finds him, he finds himself overseas here in the States, playing for Gardner Webb. Just one nil, a stop like that will Give you a little boost of adrenaline. Yeah, and it certainly has. It's gotten a little messy in midfield, and it's because Gardner Webb is doing a really good job of anticipating Wake Forest passes. And look at the keeper coming into this match with Alan Johnson and then Pat Miller. I wonder if Scott Wells has figured out who he wants to go with, but he's got a two headed monster back there, even though. Johnson gave up two goals. Still a very good keeper himself. And then Miller you put on display on what he can do. At six foot four. Nicholas Wild, who played at UNCG with help from Scott Wells, turned out to be SoCon's very best keeper. So Scott Wells, kind of like the goalkeeper whisperer. Quick restart, 14 minutes remaining in this first half. Wake Forest leading 1-0. Huge save by Miller to keep it 1-0. PK given to Roald Mitchell. But Miller guessed correctly. And Roald Mitchell was denied his fifth goal of the season. He will keep that in the back of his mind. For sure. And his flax. He wanted to turn. Go, go, go. 
Sydney Paris has come in. And as well as Leo Garino. Pressed by Forbes. Kind of closed down on the double team. And Gardner Webb, close proximity passing. Let's take it away. Good press. Garino trying to turn. Garino gets upended. A hard foul by Zacherson. Liam O'Gara is chomping at the bit to get this free kick. Now we saw how vicious of a foot he has in the last match. And he gets a chance again here with about 12 and a half remaining in the first half. And he can put this on frame. Let's see what Wake Forest will do. It looks like they'll call off O'Gara. I don't know what's going on to me. <laughs> They're going to start and restart. And now they'll start. Play it short. Flax. Flax into space. Flax rips. Flax just on the opposite side. What a blast by Cooper Flax. Just on the wrong side. That was a hit was by Cooper Flax. Look at this. Good touch to settle it. He's got the moves tonight. Really good right hit, right footed hit. Just outside of the post. I'm still thinking about that little back heel flick on the opening goal of this game. <laughs> Jeffrey White is also come in, part of this freshman class. Number 13, and speaking of long distance shots, he can do that as well. Jose Perez also has come in. Here's Jeffrey White. White. Fancy footwork again. White slowing through. Defenders gets tripped up. Yellow card given. We talked about it already. Miguel That's the Garner risk that you take playing this aggressive physical Jeff style. A couple of yellow cards to Gardner Webb already. It's really late there. I mean, that's just a bad. It's just a, not a bad tackle in the sense that it was dangerous. Just a, a poor execution. Ogara. Tubbs, one touch, sends it. Trying to get over the back line, and smart play. Well done by that back line. That was Andrade. Was able to head it back to his keeper from Australia. Jeffrey White from Tampa, number 13. He spent time with... The U.S. Soccer Development Academy, and also with Tampa Bay United. MLS next. Well done there by Hoyos. Hoyos with that brace. It was red in the match against JMU. It's black here, but Hoyos Another pathway to D1 and maybe even higher by going on D2 ranks with the well-known Charleston team, and not Charleston, South Carolina, Charleston, West Virginia. That is where Coach Scott Wells had two national titles when he was an assistant there. They produce a lot of good talent. On top, we've got Marshall there, too, in West Virginia. University. It's impressive to build a D2 program like that because exactly what you see here is that your talent gets picked, scouted yeah. and, and picked off. Yeah, exactly. 
Garino. Garino. Oh, and that extra touch may have got pulled a little bit. But Wake Forest now resetting again. Ogara. Able to connect with Flax. Flax is being chased down by Oils. Sydney Paris wants it. And Prince and Ponza went with a more difficult pass. It was taken away, knocked away by Gardner Webb. Applaud the effort. The, difficult, the difficulty in that one is off the charts. Trying to get past those defenders in the area. As Tubbs, another phenomenal step by the captain. Wallet is now the outside attacker. And Escribano has shifted over to the right back position. And Sydney Paris coming here to the left. Gardner Webb just trailing 1 0. Five shots, Wake Forest, two shots for Gardner Webb. Running Bulldogs are all in this contest. There is no doubt about it. And they know it. Correa. Good play, ball, and a volley, half volley that is stopped. Dead in its tracks by Trace Alfin. How on earth? Did he keep that one from getting past him? Hoyos, pinpoint range right there, and he just driv drove it right to Drace Alvin. Yeah, and Hoyos, it took him a while to realize that that had been saved. He thought there was no chance that there was a stop to be made there. Really, really good by Trace Alvin. Made himself big and gave himself the best possible chance at making a save. What a great ball, too. Hoyos, you couldn't ask for a better better ball. Unlucky that he was un, unable to get it past Trace off Alfin, but that's where you want it, right at your foot on a half volley. Both goalkeepers making a big impact in this game. Let's watch this ball. <laughs> that's just gorgeous. Two bounces right there in front of the six. And then hit it with your right foot. Oof. Yeah. Ponza not happy with how that ball bounced, but man, Wake Forest fortunate that they are still up one nil. Oscar Sears will come in. Alfin has done his job. A little tip of the cap to the other goalkeeper in uh, Mallard or Millard, pardon me, saying, okay, well, I'll have to do some of my skills here. Stoppage of time. Substitutions coming on. Not exactly sure what the holdup is. Center ref is headed over to the tent. He's chatting with some of the substitutes. Not sure why. It's Mike Strutt, Mike Stutt, pardon me, who is the head referee, and John Haub, as well as Matthew Engelbert. So that was interesting. What do you think that was? <laughs> I have no I'm, clue. I'm lost. I'm lost here. My, your guess is as good as mine. According to our great producer, Oscar Everett Sears Hutto, they the added eight Gardner seconds Webb, to the clock. 15, so. Ramon Satya. Nice with, job by with, our team. Yeah, thank you for that, for catching that. I, I'm just baffled at why with six and a half minutes to go, eight seconds makes a difference. White. 
tough angle. They closed it down perfectly. White knocked it off the foot of Correa. That uh, will bring up a corner. Kick upcoming for Wake Forest. Joining the honors, number 10, Oscar Sears. This is just the second corner for Wake Forest. There's been now three total. Two for Wake, one for Gardner Webb. Sears, Curly, headed away. Perez, high in the air. Tubbs is, up the, Tubbs is way up there as well as Okara in an absolute laser that just veers right of the frame. Jose Perez may have put a permanent mark on that wall back there, but man, that is a howitzer. Look, look the, the camera could <laughs> That's how fast that ball was going. What a blast. Absolutely sent his laces through that one. Still 1 0, four and a half remaining in the first half. Ogara with pressure, still able to give it back to his support and Prince and Ponza. And a misplay by White goes out of bounds. Sidney Paris. Tracked that one back down and then got called for a foul. Four minutes remaining. This is Kyle, another dangerous set piece. Yeah, from very deep. But we've seen these trouble wake a few times with a good delivery. Fisher, Max Fisher, looks to be the one that's going to take it. With his left foot. Fisher from over the ponds. Didn't quite get the touch he wanted. And Wake Forest will take that luck and try to move up the pitch while it was closing in. The Deeks, who went over to Pittsburgh, a very difficult place to play on Saturday night. They didn't get back here, set up for a matchup that May, maybe last May would have said, oh, hey, it's Gardner Webb, right? They're undefeated. And then after playing Gardner Webb, they'll have to try to get things back in order to prepare for Syracuse, who is, by the way, back into what they were doing last season. Yeah, incredible team. They just are so resilient, and it's going to be a, a tough battle on the weekend. Probably the match to watch this weekend. Make sure you join us Saturday night. Kyle and myself will be on the call. I'm looking forward to that matchup. Still got a lot of soccer to play here tonight under the lights at Spry. Forbes has made it 1-0 off a deflection. Rolled Mitchell had a chance with a PK to make it 2-0, but it was blocked by Miller. And Gardner-Webb very much in this fight. Just under two to play. Perez. Now we we'll recycle, circle it back. Sydney Paris hoping for a one-two. Dorino did the right thing. Slides it over to Jeffrey White. White. Sydney Paris. Finds a spot, gives it to Jeffrey White. Garino turn and shoot, and right into the hands of Millard. Oh, that's a really difficult skill, that turn and fire, but Leo Garino has that in his toolbox. We've seen it. That's a really good hit, just too central. 
Sidney Paris fighting Sidney Paris on his way down, and he looks to be in pain. Mike Forrest wants to do the quick restart. They do 27 seconds remaining in the first half. There's Perez. There's Wallen on the outside. Wallen gets creative. Lots of striped jerseys, but Wallet was still right there with the ball at his foot. And unfortunately, it does not result in at least an attempt or an opportunity for Wake Forest, and that is how we will finish off the first half at 1-0. And it very well could have been a different scoreline, just given the opportunities we have seen and witnessed here in the first half. Kyle, your thoughts? Yeah, to get results. Um, and so... Sure, yes, you have more knowledge as, as the season goes on. But this team is good enough and talented enough to win at any point in the year. Well, I mean, you look at what they have done. I mean, okay, they lost 3-0 to Pittsburgh. But they have yet to allow a goal in the run of play this entire season. And that even goes back to exhibition game. So... You look at that as a team, say, okay, if we can just get our defense on set pieces, where would we be, right? You only have one loss anyway. So for a team that is experienced and talented, I mean, there's a, a lot of positive news for this team moving forward. And it, you cannot, and, it, and this is... Rule number one in the ACC, you cannot put your head down <laughs> after one loss against a conference opponent. It's just, it's ACC, and then... Opponents now, are hard already. Yeah, yeah. You can't beat yourself <laughs> mentally, too. Now now you get the news, like, two weeks ago that you're going to add <laughs> Cal, Stanford, and SMU. <laughs> you, talk about, you can go undefeated with those teams added to this already giant of a conference. That's saying something. <laughs> And I, I was talking to you before the match about my conversation with Bobby Muse. Yeah, no, you got to go a while back to a team that went unblemished, undefeated, and get into the College Cup into the final. And even that team, which was Santa Clara 1989, they had three ties. They finished that season 1-1 tie with UVA. That was the last time that college soccer did the co-champions and yet the coaches expect it right that's how that's how you desire positive results and, and drive yourself as you expect perfection and he wouldn't want anything less your head coach Scott Wells is the same thing and Gardner Webb Thomas somehow escapes the reach of Millard and surprise, surprise, Roll Mitchell, Mitchell is there to bury it. He can't stop scoring at Spry Stadium. A hat trick last time here, and now you've got a couple today. When the ball loves you, or it's got his first today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at this. Colin Thomas, a long run, perfectly skated ball. It Pops right to Roll Mitchell, and look, that's, sometimes you get the, the bounce. That's just a miscommunication. Yeah. Uh, the, the keeper clearly, I don't know if he yelled it, but he has the green light to get that, and you have to immediately back away or jump over. I think he was kind of confused with what Ward was doing and then also bracing for contact, and that could have very well been the reason why that ball escaped and got to Old Mitchell, but yeah, this is how the story of this game is gone. It's just fortuitous bounces, fortuitous uh, skips on the grass. Just I, how the game goes. I agree, and it's tough for a goalkeeper in that spot because you can't hesitate as a goalkeeper. You cannot hesitate. In, no matter what decision you make, stay, go, come off your line, whatever. You can't hesitate, and Oftentimes, if you're in a position to make one decision and then the defender makes the same decision, now you're committed. That was a good idea. Well, 
well done by Trace Alfin coming off the line to stop that pathway. And that was intended, of course, for Hoyos. Well played ball by Brown. And Trace Alfin able to read that well. Deacons leading 2 0. Rold Mitchell had a chance with a PK in the first half, was denied, but in the early minutes of the second half, a gift wrapped ball by Colin Thomas that escapes the reach of Millard. And Rold Mitchell buries it and make it 2 0. Rold Mitchell, the timing by Rold Mitchell. You can't teach that. It's use the body. He's so what? Uh, use the body to basically box out the defender and then allow that ball to slide by you to make that turn. And those long legs, once you just hesitate for a millisecond, you're toast. And then the only thing you can do is either clip those long legs and it's a PK or yellow card. But that's, you can't teach that. That's just timing. That's how you read the ball, even on a fast pitch. Yep. Timing is a massive part of a striker's game. You have to stay on side. You have to make runs for your teammates. You have to see when the ball is being delivered. You have to time where the defender is. Yep. It's, that's all, not all, but that's a big part of being a striker. Yeah, a lot of it is reading. It's reading where the ball is going to be played, where your teammates are, your spacing. Forbes, also you saw this in the first half, is kind of using that width, right, to escape the vision of the back line of Gardner-Webb and then creeping in. If he didn't do that, we probably wouldn't see that first goal because he snuck in there brilliantly. And that's all about timing, too. Wins another foul here. Jeffrey White, the freshman, back on the pitch here for the second half. Another card given Gardner-Webb. No, stranger, no strangers to cards, but, I mean, you know, you don't want to see a lot of bookings, right? But I just love the fight by Gardner-Webb. I mean, okay, some of them are a little late on the challenges. Some of them, I don't know if they're done personally, right? But they are willing to sacrifice their body for any ball. And sometimes they're a little late and it becomes a yellow card. But if I'm coach Scott Wells, that's what I want of my first year as a head coach in my players, that they are willing to do all of that for a result. You see the foul count there, though. That's, that's what happens. Look, bending ball by Oscar Sears. My heavens, that is a beautiful spun ball by Oscar Sears. Sears, who's been trying to get on the pitch this season. Look at that. Just I didn't mean, have the finish yeah, across yeah. the face of goal. That's a tough one. What a tail on that one. So Sears couldn't ask for a better ball. Just couldn't get a head on it. It was Bo Cummins who put a head on it, I believe. Imagine if Garrison Tubbs got in there, or O'Gara, for that matter. I know Wake Forest has struggled defensively against set pieces, but if you got someone like Oscar Sears sending balls like that into the box, that is a weapon. The spin, the location, you just got to get your hammers, as I say to collapse on that far stick. Jeffrey White bearing down. Here's Cummins, too. That's a lot of speed. Speaking of speed, the machine, Kojima. Wake Forest went out, switch it to the left side. Deacons blanking Gardner-Webb, 2-0. Gardner-Webb... Of course, as we mentioned in the opener, they're not your old Gardner Webb. This team is legit. Big South, you have been warned. Cummins. 
Cummins. Referee says play on. Oscar Sears inserts this one. Well done. Good defensive play by Correa to cut that one out. That was for sure and surely going to get to Thomas on the outside wing. Four shots for Gardner Webb, nine for the Demon Deacons. It's a high shot count for Wake Forest at this stage in the game. They'll uh, be very pleased with that. My apologies, it's eight to three in shots. Still, our, team, our, our teammates in the studio are mad at me, so I apologize. You're right, eight to three on the shot tally. Ogara in the center of the circle. Cummins has moved up. Kojima into a nice pocket on that half space. Oh, look at the turn again by Roald Mitchell. Takes on one. Right-footed shot, and it skips right into the chest of Millard. Kyle, once again, Wake Forest using those vertical channels a lot again, or a lot here in the second half, just like they did the first half. Yep, and the timing remains key on those. Great effort. That is the shot you want. It's yes. central, but it's bouncing, and that is tough for a goalkeeper. Thomas escapes one. Close to the byline, scoops it up in the air. Gardner Webb. Fortunately, gets on it and clears it away. But talking to Coach Scott Wells yesterday or last night, he was saying about you know, how, how you split up the field, right? And you write for Sporting News, so you know all about it with the channels. You have your wide channels, your vertical channels, which are in the middle. So you, you basically cut it, what, in four sections. So he does that on his practice field, and he plays that game of chess. Of chess, not chest. Um, <laughs> on the numerical advantage, which is great. I mean, Pep does it. A lot of you know, EPL people do it. This is just a matter of getting those numbers and creating a numerical advantage, which is hard for opponent to score on or to be successful against. Wake Forest has done a good job of moving to different channels, sporadically going from the right channel, right wide channel to the left channel, and even using the vertical channel. Yeah, and. What's cool about that is we're seeing it with Roberto De Zerbi at, at Brighton. Love it. Uh, he creates mismatches and overloads, numerical advantages in new ways by really pressing in ways that teams haven't even seen before. Pep Guardiola started to steal some of it already. Yes. He's even said on record that De Zerbi has made him kind of recalculate things as a manager. It, it's if you're a, if you're a football fan, soccer fan, and watching the the styles, the the strategies of Deserby, it's phenomenal. It's outstanding. Big fan of what he's doing at Brighton. It it'd be nerve wracking, right? I mean, it, you're you have your center back, which has become even more important these days, right? But you're inviting that press and trying to get, once that chess, what chess move is moved, that allows someone to get behind you wide open, another card given. So it's a, it's an interesting strategy. It's another yellow card given. This time, it's to Zacherson. It is very late. I mean, some of these tackles, like I understand that you want to be physical, you want to be aggressive, and you want to give the other team problems in the buildup. But some of these tackles have just been really late. Do you, do you think it's also maybe a result of still trying to adapt the speed of the game? So it's, you, you can go with certain players that aren't as used to the speed of a game, right? Their challenge, it's the right idea, just a little late. 
Yeah. And that uh, will you, cause but, but yellow cards. You have to know that you're late, right? Yeah, right. And yeah. So I think they do. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> you're just saying you have to recognize that you're late before you make the tackle. Oh, I know. A couple players who drive me nuts on my favorite club. You know that's late. <laughs> you see, uh, Coach Scott Wells, the physical pitch play. 13 yellows, two red cards in the first three matches. Tonight, four yellows. But, uh, I mean, this team is all fight. And, you know, they get their timing right. If they're learning by the late slides, right? then I think you can fix that. But I don't, you know, I wouldn't put them in the neighborhood of dirty at all. It's not, I don't see any malice. In no. It. I think it's just a little it's just late. late. Yeah. But I, I love the fight. I mean, this is, if you're a player, this is the type of team you want to be a part of, that even down 2-0, this team is, you know, salivating at the mouth and fighting to the end of the last whistle. There's Hoyos, Santiago Hoyos, who we spotlighted in the opening. He's been feisty. Yeah. So he's the best striker ever to play at Charleston. And that's saying a lot just because of the players that Charleston has brought in the D2 level. Cream of the crop when it comes to D2. Roll Mitchell. It's knocked off the ball there. By Ward. And we talked about recruiting and trying to rebuild this Gardner Webb team, which they're well ahead in their rebuilding, rebuilding phase. Just about, just of course, where they are. But on the domestic style of, of recruiting. Scott Wells is known to bring in good talent, whether it's domestic or international. He brought in J.C. Gondo, who was arguably the best soccer player in college soccer last season. He also brought in a player that also went in the super draft for MLS. Kid that left and went to Clemson, Joey Skinner all his recruits. So, again, you start making noise, you get that recognition. No doubt in my mind that uh, Coach Wells will will sell the program at Gardner West. He would have taken it if he didn't think he could win there. He knows he can win there. Oh, nice through ball. Oscar Sears did tap it a little bit the outside of his boot. And it sprayed a little too far out in front. And off the line is Miller to stop any attack. The ball was well played. Just Sears just couldn't quite settle it. Just under 30 to go in the second half. Wake Forest leading 2-0. Early goal in the second half as Roald Mitchell was able to redeem himself after getting denied on the PK. It was a brilliant stop, though, by Miller. Ogara, I know he's had some hiccups just for being a freshman. Those are what you expect as a freshman. Mm -hmm. But man, I mean, I don't know if you see it like I do, but as a freshman, you know his I see it like yeah, yeah, we about. talked about. Okay, well, his poise is yeah. In you, open uh, play, yes, he has been just really calm. He's been smart with the ball. Even, made, even with some hiccups, he's yeah. been able to just put that behind. The hiccups him. have come yeah. on set pieces. It's been part of a wider Well, he he, drew, he was he had a misplay of the ball that right. almost resulted in a goal. But those those are what freshmen will experience in their first year. But what I am enamored by is his way of just 
blocking that out and getting back to business. And that goes to his mental game, right? How strong he is mentally. Rolled Mitchell. Here he goes. Oh, he about split the defender. Did have a jersey pull, and that is exactly what the referee sees in a yellow card is going to be given. Yeah, that's a different yellow card than the rest of them that Gardner-Webb has picked up. That one's a tactical foul that was done to prevent a counter chance and probably the right move because there was a big opportunity here. Yep, he is not clean through on goal, but pretty close. It's like, it's like a swim move by a defensive <laughs> 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 Well, this will be a set piece for Wake Forest, a yellow card given to Andrade. Although they serve him on Malcolm Ward. Clipped into the box, headed off the back of the head of Garrison Tubbs. Tubbs is claiming he didn't touch it last, but not entertained at all is the official. It'll be a goal kick. Garino returns. Ponce comes in for the first time. Ponce, a very talented player. Transfer from Boston College. Still trying to get his feet wet here at Wake Forest. But once you see that confidence up, that's another weapon that you can bring off the bench. And sometimes you can start. He started at Boston College. Yeah. I mean, this is a starter that as you a kid. have. Yeah. This is a kid you have as an option off the bench. And he's a starter that came from Boston College. Kill, uh, Coach Muse did not reveal what he told his team at the hotel after the pit loss. He said he'll keep it between him and the team. I mean, that's fair. You got to do that. But uh, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall on what he said. And I'm sure it was on or in the neighborhood of you know, this is the worst regular season loss that we've had. You're either going to make your own history or make a bad history of yourself for this year. So it's time to go out there and do something. And they have they have really responded well, leading 2-0. They've got Syracuse coming up. Garino. Still using that vertical channel. Chase Oliver's come in. It's 2 0. With a lot of soccer to be played. Nice play ball on a rebound, and at least an attempt there by Andrada, I think. Surprised, but the numbers by Wake Forest were there. And that ball spit out. And notice, you can notice the amount of time and space. That was right there for maybe even a chance to make it two to one. It's just surprising by that. Is, surprised by that is also, well, not surprised by this as Jake Swallen coming in. Swallen sat out all last season. Returns this season. Phenomenal human being and a hard worker, even a very talented soccer player, too. <laughs> and we talk about poise from Ogara. The poise from number 24 is off the charts, too. It's been that way since he stepped on here at Spry Stadium for the first time. Gardner Webb turning up. The notch on the press here. Just trailing 2 0. Not surprised by that. Flax. Swallen. 
dictating where he wants the ball, gives it to Ogara. Ogara goes down, they say play on. Ponce. Flax running on. Flax still right there in between the center back and the goalkeeper. Good effort and good press by Cooper Flax, the sophomore. Ponce. Here's Forbes. Forbes on the far side looked and thought about the switch. This time it is going to be switched to Escribano. Escribano with a left foot able to link up with Oliver. Lake Forest will once again reset. Flax. Good marking by Gardner Webb. Closing down the passing channels. Lake Forest is used to having those channels open up, especially when they widen the field. Gardner Webb did a good job of scouting that, getting their numbers back. Twenty minutes remaining here in the second half. Scoreline two nil. Wake Forest on top. It's been a little sleepy since the second Wake Forest goal. Both sides really just kind of duking it out. Deeks are pushing for a third, but seem a little happy with where it is right now. And uh, Gardner Webb just doing their best to disrupt the the buildup. Chase Oliver. Chase Oliver. He was pinching in, looking to try to find Garino. And Escribano knew he was guilty. And it'll be a free kick for Gardner Webb. Ten o'clock Eastern Standard Time. A little weather delay. Had to start the first touch of this one. Uh, Eight thirty. Uh, unlucky attempt on the delivery there on the far side. As that one just got away from Brown. Lilito Fuentes has come in, number 29. Alfin is going to get one for taking too much time. Gardner Webb not going to lay back on that press. Garino. Chase this one down. Oh, Flax almost picked that one away. Andrada, risky pass. Andrada was able to get it. Wake Forest back with possession. Orchestrating another attack. Swallow still trying to get that touch back. It's, right. it's, it's in his head. You can see how create, creative he can get. That will come with more touches on the ball. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's an experienced player, but being out for so long, that's the toughest, it's going to take a minute. It's the toughest thing is, is your head knows what you've been able to do, right? And you're 
body's now trying to get back calibrated to where it was. So in your mind, you, you make that move nine times out of ten. But repetition, then it becomes with that muscle memory. This goes out. It'll be a corner for Gardner Webb. Handing it off and walking over there is a quarter. Matu, a quarter, will take it. Right foot out swinging. Let's see what Gardner Webb can do with this one. Trailing 2 0. Curling. A yellow card given to Ogara. I think, although Gardner Webb seems to be upset, I thought the the card was given over the head of Ogara. We'll get clarification here in a minute. Well, it results in another corner, though. The corner is going to take it again. Yeah, there's a clear shirt pull there. Yeah, so that was just... Maybe they were looking for a, a PK. Is that it? Were they hoping for that? Yeah, they you know, I'm the more animated. if that was the yellow card, then it should have been a penalty. And that's why they were... Yeah, set. I'm a little confused by that. Maybe he got a yellow card for dissent afterwards. I I'm not quite sure. Another corner kick for Gardner Webb, this time by number three, Max Fisher. A lot of shoving going on. A lot of jawing. <laughs> you can tell the head referee he has had a busy day at the office. This will be an in-swinger this time. High in the air, deflect or flicked on. Well played again by Gardner Webb, although it gets just left of the frame. Well designed, just could not put it through. Andrada was the one that got his head on it. Yeah, sometimes it's just not your night in front of goal. They've had a couple of really good opportunities to breach this Wake defense. A couple of good trace off and saves, but the finishing has not been great. And the official clearly not happy with the Gardner-Webb sideline. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of with them here. I'm just not quite sure what the decisions were. Because on, on that replay, I mean, it looked like a pretty clear foul by Liam O'Gara. You can get away with a good amount of stuff in there, but I'm not quite sure why that wasn't a penalty. This is a... Good chance. He that may goes have just wide. off his back, but I got to give props to the official for at least coming and explaining it to the the coaches. I much rather have an official do that as opposed to just don't talk to me. And right. you know, Coach Wells just wanted an explanation, and Mike Stutt, who's been an official for a long time, was able to go over and explain what he saw. It may not be exactly. <laughs> what Coach Wells saw, but still, I, I'm sure he respects the fact that the official came and explained why that call was the call. Still a very good set piece that was put together by Gardner Webb. Ogara. Risky pass, but able to connect with Travis Smith Jr., who's come on. Swallow. Garino. Travis Smith Jr. There's Poltsek. Overlapping run. Forbes. 
Forbes scanning. 14 minutes remaining in this contest. Deacons looking for a clean sheet. Nice settle by Escobado. Fighting off in Cortner. Right, pardon me. E. Cortner. I'll bring it back. And a quick restart by Swallen. Ponce. Ponce trying to draw the defenders into that center and then moving it out to the left, hoping to connect with Flax. But it was well read by Gardner Webb and cut out. No quit in this Gardner website. No, they have really stuck with it. And, you know, the, the opportunities in front of net haven't fallen their way, but they've made life difficult for Wake Forest in this game. This is definitely not a midweek matchup, easy street type of matchup for Wake Forest. This has been a contest. We knew it was going to be a contest just by how Gardner-Webb has played to start this season. Even with history on Wake Forest's side on how dominant they have been against Gardner-Webb. They still are not taking this team lightly. Oliver. Here's Swallen. Nice triangle passing between Swallen. Oliver, Escribano. Oliver gets tripped up. Taken back by Swallen. Forbes. Now Ponce again on that left channel. Flax. Scoop. Oh, he was trying to connect right back to Ponce. The idea was there. Flax with that scoop. <laughs> Team USA playing right now. And uh, looking at the, the updates, looks like Mark McKenzie, former Demon Deacon, coming in. Right the game for week four, Getting another cap for the U.S. national team. That's always cool. Here are the goals. Could have been a lot more, but look at that time. That is just slick and smooth. Jelani Forbes somehow found some space after Roald Mitchell missed the PK. Gift wrapped right to him at the six. He buries it, makes it 2 0. That's where we sit. Ten and a half to go. Wake Forest could have four goals. Gardner Webb could have two or three. Yeah, so we've seen where, where we are right now. We, we talked about it early in this game, Ty. It's, I mean, finishing is just one of the weirder events, if you will, in the game of soccer. It's, it can be random. You can have good players go through dry spells. You can have not so good players <laughs> get goals. I mean, it's just, you know, good goalkeepers make mistakes uh, it's it can get random and sometimes it's just not your night sometimes it is your night <laughs> well we talked about how dominant Wake Forest has been against Gardner Webb in this history the last meeting 20 years ago 6-1 the final and Wake Forest outshot Gardner Webb 30-6 to totally different here tonight William Hesmer was in goal for Wake Forest in that contest. Went on to a very, very successful MLS career, as well as Wells Thompson and Michael Parkhurst. 
both on that team. Scott Seeley, who had back-to-back -back years with a hat trick, he was also on that team. Chase that one down. Most cases on a dry pitch, he would. That one goes out of bounds. Under eight and a half to go here at Spry Stadium. A match that delayed by weather by almost an hour, one hour and a half. Bo Cummins back in. Escribano goes out. Courtner goes out for Gardner West. Another good step. One touch played up to Wallet. We've had our share of matches that have been disrupted by weather. And it has kind of veered fans away from the stands. Hopefully this Saturday, no weather will cause fans to stay away from Spry because this place usually gets really, really packed and raucous. Even in midweek clashes. And that's a big one coming up, for sure. The fans will be playing a big role. Always a fun environment here at Spry when it's an ACC contest. And especially when you bring you bring in the defending national champions. Jose Perez back in. We'll get some reps. Ogara going out. A recruiting class that was ranked ninth in the country, overshadowed by many, many, many classes that were in the top three. But Coach Moose has really used a lot of his freshman class. He has, for sure. Look at that ball play. Forbes lines it up. Garrido. Deacons. Silky smooth. One touch passing. The vertical ball for the hockey assist. Gorgeous. The lateral cutback from Forbes. Gorgeous. And then the finish. Perfect as well. Garino had to be smart where he met that ball. So they didn't get called for obstructing the goalkeeper, but also got there first. That is how you draw it up. Incisive. And they worked on that with, in training yesterday. It was getting up the pitch, making quick passes. Look at that pass. Which then immediately, yes, that's exactly what they worked on. And it was boom, boom, bang. And we saw a lot of that. I mean, if if Lionel Messi makes that pass for Inter Miami, the internet explodes. That's a brilliant pass. It is. There's talent all over this field on both sides. A lot of talent, of course, for this home side. And, and the old gold black are clicking. Kyle, we've seen it many, many times. It is fun to watch. It's a team that is always a threat to hoist the cup at the end. Even with a 3-0 loss to Pitt on the road, the great teams respond well. Not, do not put their head down and keep going. And Wake Forest, even against a, an opponent that they have dominated, a 3-0 win against especially a Gardner-Webb team this season it is a pretty phenomenal feat. Julian Kennedy comes in. He will replace the goal scorer, Leo Garino. Look at this. 
Sidney Paris. Sid Vicious sending it up to Kennedy. Kennedy trying to turn. Double teamed, it was tough to turn there, but watching Sidney Paris move and then hit that B button for an explosion of speed and then trying to send that probing pass to Kennedy. Deacons are not satisfied with a 3-0 lead. With just under five to go. Forbes comes out. And he's got possession. Forbes still with possession. Two defenders got in his way. Travis Smith Jr. slides it over to the freshman. To Brough. Cummins. And you talk about that pass with Wallant. And Wallant this season, he hasn't had exactly the, the season he wanted to start it off. And maybe it looked as his head was kind of down, down on himself. But man, that pass, you could tell me differently. Because he looked 100% confident with, with his skills yes. <laughs> to put that on. He saw it coming before it, it even happened. Devin Armstrong comes in. New keeper for Wake Forest, replacing Trace Alphen as well as Nikki Mancia. From Osorno, Chile. Oscar Sears still trying to find his first tally of the season. One of the leading scorers in 2022. Trying to get his footing for this season. There's just a lot of talent. It's deep for Wake Forest. So you have to keep pace or someone will kind of move ahead of you. That doesn't mean that you're not good as a soccer player. It's just, just how that deep roster is. Look at that play by Sidney Paris, off and running. Sid Vicious into the box and the point to the spot. He dangled it there and he was able to draw the foul. And the point to the spot is the reward. Ty, we've talked about it a couple times in this game and it's late, it's just late. Like the tackle, you could see the wheels turning, the defender makes the decision there, and it, by the time he makes contact, the ball is gone. And so it's just timing, and the timing has just not been there today. Tackle. Look who's going to take the PK. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt you, but what a moment. Jake Swallen will take the PK. And it's money. Jake Swallen returning to action after a whole year off, recuperating from an injury. He stayed the course, fought his way, and here he is back on the pitch. And look what it means to the team. Look what it means to this Wake Forest team. Jake Swallen is an emotional heart and soul of this team. They all feel what he's feeling right now. Swallen looks to be back in full effect. And he buries the PK. Not a doubt in his mind. 2-4 makes it 4-0. What a story. Going down in the spring season of 2022, and then having to sit out the entire year, unable to even practice with the team. And he just kept positive. He even had a kind of a, a hiccup in the beginning of the season, but he just kept at it. It was just says a lot. Gardner Webb says a lot about this team. They're not giving up even down 4-0. There is a lot of fight in this team, and there's a lot of great moments ahead. 
for Gardner Webb. They got the right guy on the touchline with Scott Wells. And if you want to turn around your program, that's the right guy to do it. There's Coach Wells, first year. An assistant under Chris Rich at UNCG. On the magical year they had last season. He said he was ready. And he is ready. Not going to get the result he wanted tonight. But Kyle, even with Two players missing because of red cards. And I think you don't put your head down on this one. No, I mean, you've, you've run into a Wake team that's A, angry, and B, just a buzzsaw here at, at Spry. You know, the, the road results, they, might, they may need to figure out, but they have turned into a force here at the home stadium. And Gardner Webb played well. They, you just can't miss the opportunities that they had against this Wake Forest team. And that was one of the things he spoke to me about. It was, you know, you're not going to get a lot of opportunities by this Wake Forest team. It's just once you are given them, you have to execute. And I mean, from some of the balls played in and how you can see the process working, right? It's using the wing, sending it into the box, and laying it on a platter. I mean, it is all there. Oscar Sears, maybe a little bit of a turn and blast. And that will conclude our Tuesday night fixture non-conference matchup between Gardner-Webb and Wake Forest, the first time that they have met in 20 years as the Demon Deacons Respond.